Today we're going to talk about organic gardening and building a natural ecosystem for your fruit trees starting right now. In our last video, we took a break in the action to enjoy a great tasting banana that came fresh out of the orchard. And I've got to tell you, her table manners are getting really good. Sahara knows that if she wants me to part with some of these great tasting bananas, she's got to be on her best behavior. And in today's episode, she is rushing to tell her friends and she wants you to tell your friends to stick around to the end of the video because she has a special message that ties health into our topic today of organic gardening. All right, we've had quite a bit of rain here in Southern California as of late, and I actually love the rain. I love the rain. It cleans out the air. The air is nice and crisp. It gives the orchard and fruit trees a natural source of water, which is really cool. And I thought now would be a great time to share with you some approaches that we take here in the orchard to do things all organic. Everything here is natural, no synthetic fertilizers. Everything here is from the earth that goes back to the earth. And so those are the things we're going to cover today and show you a little bit how we do it here in Backyard Orchard Dreams. So one of the things I want to orient you on is how steep my hillside is, how steep of a slope. Gives you, it'll give you a sense of why I plant trees in a tree well while I cut and put them in a hole and do what I do with the way I plant them. So I'm on kind of a third level of a sloped property. There's the mango that's at the lowest point. You go up about five feet, you get to these apple trees. You go up another, I don't know, five to seven feet. It's a mulberry. By the way, the mulberry is starting to wake up. Look at that. The leaves are coming, which is super cool. And then I've got this other little guy. A little protect him, trying to get a little bit more humidity onto this mango tree. It's a small, um, small, what's the variety of that? Sweet tart. Now let me turn back around and look down. Now this is a good... 20 or so feet higher than where I started down by the mango tree on the right and the apples on the left. So again, just shows you how steep, give you a side angle. Let me turn it, if it was flat, it would be kind of like that. That's the slope, but no, that's looking straight forward and you can see how steep this is slope. So let's get back to this apple tree. The example we're going to use today uh, to demonstrate an organic ecosystem is going to be this two-in-one apple tree planting. On the right here, right there, is the pink lady and over here is the granny smith. And let me show you down there, check that out. That's uh, kind of where we create this organic ecosystem on this hillside. And uh, we're gonna use this as the example today and show some things and point some things out for you. All right, again, we're on a slope. And the side closest to me, this side, is about two and a half feet lower than the back of the tree well. To give you an idea again of how this property is sloped and how the situation is. And we've got a lot of mulch here. Actually, before I do that, let me give you a little bit of the dimensions. We got about three and a half feet wide, about three feet deep, or three feet, uh, three and a half feet long, three feet wide. And when I dug these holes, it was about three feet deep. I put these guards around because I put a lot of mulch in this area. And I actually will put more, but let, let me just pull it back. Just let you see how much mulch. You gotta go down about four or five inches. This protector is about nine inches. So yeah, it's about four and a half inches of mulch. I like to get to about six to eight. Um, 
and so I can put another couple of inches of mulch in here to uh, to get it up to a nice level. Now let me dig down, and under all these leaves, there should be a nice ecosystem down below of beneficial worms and insects. Let's keep digging down. Yeah, look at that. Look at the quality of, see that? Some worms there. There's a little guy right there. See, look at another little guy right there. And that's what you want in your soil. You want, when you dig down, you want to be able to see a lot of life. I don't want to disturb it too much. Look at, there's another guy right there. See that guy there? And what these insects are doing is they're breaking down the leaves. They're breaking it down, they're consuming it, and what they poop out becomes food for the plants. And that creates a very nice, healthy environment, recycling of leaves and food scraps and such to create a organic feeding system for your fruit trees. All right, so when I feed the food trees with organic fertilizers, I use something like this, a 624, which is a mild um, uh, formula, and it's gonna have all natural ingredients. It's gonna have things like alfalfa, bone meal, feather meal, and such. And I usually look for the Omri, Omri signal or symbol on the bag. And what that tells me is that um, one, that they're a big enough outfit to be able to afford the process of getting certified by Omri. Um, and there's other companies that advertise as organic, but unless you see the Omri symbol, you know, you're, you're, um, you know, you're pretty much trusting their word that it's organic. So I use that, um, as a, you know, a kind of a, a feeding system and I won't pull all the mulch back. Some people just throw it on top of the leaf layer. I will dig down a little bit. I won't go all the way down to the roots, but I will dig down a little bit and I'll put about, make about four, five, six holes in the tree well. And I will deposit about two cups worth of a fertilizer into the hole uh, for a tree like this. And then just cover it up, water it down, get it nice and mixed in there and let the insects actually digest and let it break down into the soil. Similarly with the liquid uh, fertilization, I will use something like liquid kelp. Again, we got the Omri signal on it. And I will take this and we'll follow the directions and add a couple of uh, tablespoons to a gallon or two of water and do the same thing. I would usually get through a little bit of this mulch layer and pour that into the soil and let it absorb into the soil. And that's a, that's a, the feeding process I follow. Now, I don't do it as much as I think that I may, I should, just because I don't have time. I've got so many trees now. So most of the feeding happens from these leaves. Uh, maybe we'll take some um, peels and uh, fruit scraps and vegetable scraps and throw it on top and let it break down or I'll take something from my comp compost pile to let it to let it break down and put it on top of the uh, the soil to feed it um, and I may get to actually putting uh, the fertilization the the fertilizer here maybe once or twice a year again I just don't have time to do that for 60 plus trees in the ground another 30 plus trees in pots so that's what I use to fertilize the fruit, the fruit trees. So when you're in the forest and I've got a little bit of a mini forest behind me, check that out. When you're in the, fo in the forest, what happens is the, the, the trees, they grow, they produce leaves, they produce fruit and they drop the fruit, they drop the leaves and it creates a layer on the forest bed, on the floor of the forest. Uh, you know, six inches or so of leaves and fruit and animals come along and they poop and pee and all of that gets mixed together 
and the byproduct of that, when that decomposes, turns into a food source that then seeps down into the soil and feeds the fruit trees. That is the life cycle of what happens from in, in a natural environment in a forest. And that's how we want to replicate what we want to replicate here in our orchard. Let's talk a little bit about insect and pest control. So let's look at citrus. Citrus are known for having a insect called a leaf miner. And what they do is they usually can be found at the bottom of the leaves, underneath the leaves. And they actually get into the leaves and look, it almost looks like a snail trail. Let me, let me walk over here to the grapefruits. Look at the damage. You can see the damage on these trees. See that? That's, that one just fell off. Look at that. That's leaf miner. And the remedy for it is a natural substance called neem oil. It comes from the neem plant. And you have to be careful about using too much of it because if you use too much on your plants, it will kill it. If you use it while the uh, tree is flower flowering, it can make it uh, impotent or sterile. If you use it while the fruit is young, the fruit might drop. So you have to be really careful about using neem oil on your fruit trees. I, I used to do it, um, put some on, but what I've learned about citrus is that for the most part, it's cosmetic. It doesn't seem to impact the tree very much. And the best defense for a tree is not neem oil. You certainly don't want to put pesticides on your fruit tree, especially if you're growing your fruit trees at home. That's the whole point of having homegrown is for it to be nice and luscious on its own um, and, and not have a source of food that uh, that is not reliable or is not safe or you know, again, you want to get to the purest quality of food that you can get to in your homegrown orchard. So, again, the best defense for a fruit tree is a healthy fruit tree. Just like for people, if you have a strong immune system, if you're eating healthy and you exercise and you're taking care of your heart and everything else, you're going to be better positioned to fight off diseases and colds and everything else. If your immune system is weak, you're going to struggle a little bit. And so with the plants, what you want to do is you want to make sure they're healthy. You want to make sure they're fed well organically. You want to make sure they're getting the right amount of water. You want to make sure that they have a network of being around each other. There's been a lot of studies done recently of how there's this underground network that's happening beneath the soil where trees are communicating, they're passing, um, I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't call it medicine, but they're, they're passing, you know, beneficial organisms and helping each other um, when other trees are in distress. So they actually communicate and they actually have a internet system, for lack of a better word, beneath the ground that they, uh, that they communicate and provide information and support each other. So again, those, those are my thoughts. Uh, one of the other things I do, uh, especially when it's summer, we're not getting a lot of rain, is I wash down the trees quite a bit. This is water coming from, from a, a recent rain that happened today. But in the summer months when it's not getting a lot of rain, I will come up once a week or so and just really hose down the tree pretty firmly. And for me, my biggest pest are the ants. So I wanna get the ants off the tree. The ants are bringing the aphids and I give it a nice wash down to get some of the insects off of there. The grasshoppers eat the leaves as well. Just give it a nice little refreshing bath and help your trees to, uh, to stay clean. Again, just like good hygiene is good for people. And just one more look. I mean, the tree, these trees have incredible these trees have incredible healing power. Many of you have seen a video that I put out a little bit ago, how I damaged this tree. Matter of fact, I did a short, the last short that I did, show a little bit of the damage. And I came and I triaged the tree, I bandaged it up and, and it, uh, the branches fused back together. 
and now it's creating this beautiful, beautiful pink flowers. And so I just point this out to say that a tree has very natural healing powers. You know, the Marvel movies where you have the Guardians of the Galaxies with Groot and how he'll lose a limb and the limb will grow back. I never really fully understood the significance of it until having an orchard and actually seeing it in action and seeing how trees can heal if they have a good foundation of health, if they have built up their immune systems, they will actually rebound and do quite well. So that's really cool to see. Just an example of, you know, again, keep your trees healthy and they will respond for you, even if they take some damage, even if they get some pressure from the elements, if they get pressure from insects, they can bounce back from that. And again, this Desert Delight Nectarine tree is a perfect example of that. All right, so that is going to be a wrap today, but make sure you stick around to the end because Sahara is up next and she wants to share a little message with you. She wants to talk a little bit about exercising that I think dovetails really nicely into the content that we covered today. So um, make sure you stick around for that. And um, also uh, throw in the comment sections if there are things that you would like for me to cover on this channel. Happy to give that a listen and see if we can work that in for you. And as always, thank you, like, and subscribe, and we will catch you next time. Take care. All right, before I deliver the message from Sahara, I want to orient you around Rhodesian Ridgebacks. Rhodesian Ridgebacks come from a region in Africa, the southern region of the continent, and they are a mixture of native dogs of Africa and also European dogs that were imported in. And the purpose of the Rhodesian Ridgebacks were to corral lions, not hunt them, but to actually corral them. And when you see this behavior, this is fun for her. This is enjoyment. She enjoys taking her friends and taking them for a little bit of aerobic training and getting their heart health up. And again, it's just part of her nature. And the message she wanted to deliver today to all of you is to make sure as you're thinking about organic gardening, you're thinking about building out your orchards in a you know, very healthy way to also make sure you have balance around exercise. And, you know, it's the full combination of mind, body, uh, and heart, um, keeping all of those things intact in healthy condition to preserve this one and only lifetime that we get here on earth. So that is, uh, again, her message. She is like Captain America. She can do this all day. And the great thing about it as well is that she's also getting her friends in shape uh, along the way. And they're keeping up pretty good. You know, I got to give them credit. They are keeping up with Sahara. And, you know, she's got a little stop and go game to her. She's got a little juke action. And uh, they follow along and keep up with her. So, anyways, that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining the channel for sticking around to this point. And if you stuck around to this point, you might as well go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the content, greatly appreciate it. And we will see you next time. You got Sahara? No?